Hello everyone, I'm Thomas Schimmelhorn. You guys are watching Drawing, Illustrations, and Art. In this video, making sure that my mic's on this time because I recorded the last video. Was it? Anyways, in this video, I'm doing this portrait of these two kids that my brother Eddie and his girlfriend uh, babysit. Uh, I was asked to do this for their parents and I sort of was just like, yeah, I'll do this. Um, now, of, of course, what I did was I went and I took a piece of charcoal, went over the background. Uh, part of that didn't get shown, sorry. Uh, and I sort of just went around the edges of the drawing, trying not to put any charcoal on the faces or inside the line work. And then I went in over it with a two inch brush. Now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm pulling out some highlights. In a little bit, you're gonna see me go back in with uh, some fine charcoal. I tried, at least for the start, to stay away from the uh, use of charcoal pencils. Towards the end, you'll see me come in with charcoal pencils and sort of darken everything up. But in the reference image, everything was really soft and I tried to keep it that way. The other thing that I did was I came in with brushes. The vine charcoal can get pretty old. Excuse me. Um, that, uh, they can get fairly bold. Um, and so I wanted to just use a brush to sort of knock that back. Another brush that I'm going to be using is what's called a cat's tail brush. Now this brush, what I do, uh, and, and I should probably explain about the brush first. It's a firm flat brush that is just a little bit short and is very useful for pushing in charcoal instead of picking up charcoal, which is what a soft, long, round brush would normally do. Now this best works when you already have charcoal on the page and then you grab some uh, charcoal dust and sort of just move it on there. Um, I'm avoiding tortillions and blending stumps because I do not want to push too much of this charcoal into the page, keeping the uh, dark sort of tones uh, and so on and so forth. One thing that I want to say, everything here is sort of like a build-up process. You're going to see me remove charcoal. You're going to see me add charcoal. Um, there are things right now that didn't turn out well that do and so forth. I'm sort of playing around with the eyes right here. The eyes were really dark in uh, the reference image. Uh, they were in a lot of shadow. And so I tried to add that element. I'm not trying to like copy this for shadow for shadow, um, but I am trying to uh, just have a likeness. I guess is how you could. We lose this. We lose this ear. This 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 ear is going away. Um, sort of didn't like it, so I got rid of it. Right, uh, and really just darkening things around the eyes especially the eyes because I want these eyes to be the darkest of the darks, the blackest of the blacks. I want us to be drawn into it and our eyes in a black and white piece are drawn to the darkest tones and then around the face um, this will eventually also be the darkest dark and so forth and I tried to make the lightest parts away from the face uh, so uh, like on the edges and whatnot and you'll see how I sort of do something like that I'm gonna do something interesting in this drawing if you've seen this on my Instagram you already know what you're doing but for the sake of this video uh, we're just going to um, see where this goes yeah one thing that I like about fine charcoal and this is this is really only to fine charcoal excuse me or um to uh charcoal that has not been that is not permanent right so like a, a charcoal pencil or a compressed piece of charcoal wouldn't be able to do this but it's very um moldable Right? It makes the piece very moldable. It's almost like, when you use vine charcoal, it's almost like painting. And then charcoal is sort of like your more permanent 
different types of things. So I like to start off with using vine charcoal because I can make mistakes early on and it's almost like a undo button. Uh, that's almost like here you see me going in and sort of just uh, playing around with the hair getting some dark strokes and then blending it uh, these eyes look creepy as can be right now please ignore that uh, I, I believe I, I fixed that right um, but right now it just looks uh, a little a little weird a little uh, not normal most certainly not in the piece here I'm thickening up the chin um, and I think I got a likeness of this this person right but uh, it really at this point doesn't look like the person and so on and so forth so I, I just tried to play around with that as much as I possibly could and I'm coming in with another round brush I like to use these smaller round brushes when I want to blend out, you know, the really tiny bits of detail, right? And I think here I was trying to measure, <laughs> but because the eyes looked off and weird and, and I didn't know how to fix them. And I think I just went with it and I think it turned out okay. Now I'm using a 6B uh, pencil. I believe I wanted the irises to be as dark as I possibly could right in the eyes really all this is going to get blended out um, and darkened and eventually I'll throw a fixative on it here you saw me darken the areas around the portrait because I want this to be pretty dark uh, eventually I'm going to do something that's going to lighten this up and I'm sort of just trying to keep that a little secret from from you guys at the moment I'll talk about it uh, some point in the video I promise and then there was this you have to be really careful with charcoal pencils that, that's the first thing I want to say here because charcoal pencils will add texture to the face right but I'm blending this out so I was okay with it this was like a 6b the the whole idea was to just uh, sort of the, it, there was this tone and I was like man this tone looks really cool it looks really soft I really want to capture this I don't think I was able to completely capture that tone um, here's to doing the next one hopefully and getting getting that here I went over the eyes sort of just playing around with this as much as possible and whatnot, blending these out and going back over it with a kneaded eraser and then blending them out again. Pay no attention to the uh, the noses. They're a little awkward and weird. I believe I fixed those at some point or in some way. Going in with the tortillion to make these these black blacks actually black and, and dark enough so that uh, they look realistic I'm trying to keep to like a three-tone system of bright uh, gray and darkest dark and if you can stay to that you, you can get pretty realistic I'm going over it again with a charcoal pencil and a cat's tail with some charcoal dust on it uh, the uh, charcoal pencil sort of just helps the charcoal dust drip a little bit more to the page give it that dark soft look to it and then of course we just blend out the edges um, because there are no hard edges on these faces I used a grid to transfer the image I didn't I didn't necessarily freehand it um, I don't think there's anything wrong with using a grid uh, because you really are still drawing it just it gives you some reference points to go off of. here I'm just darkening up the hair and the nose and really just playing around with where I want the, 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 the eye to be led right I don't want it to just stay all over the page 
age, so on and so forth. Yeah. Noses are another thing that sort of give me issues and problems and difficulties, right? Um, because especially in like younger people, and the nose is like a real definition of age and and so forth. And a lot of times, I don't I don't want to render out the nose or even describe the bridge of the nose in younger people um, because it's it's uh, it's not really defined a lot it's there right but it's so small that it's not really that significant if that makes sense uh, and whatnot. here I'm darkening parts around the uh, face and lightening things up just really trying to create something interesting before I start other things in that I don't want to uh, talk about just yet. Getting the irises and, and the eyelids just darker with the 6 b pencil. Here I just wanted to add a little bit more charcoal to the face. Right? We're almost to the uh, main part of the video, which is uh, I wanted to add some shapes. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute when I uh, come in. I wanted to add some geographic shapes. I believe that's what what they're called right here it is right and what i did was i just cut these shapes out on another sheet of paper and just removed the charcoal i thought this looked really cool and interesting and whatnot uh, but you kind of want to clean the needed eraser as you are doing this otherwise it will not remove as much of the charcoal if any and so uh, there's a lot you won't be able to see in this because the camera is so zoomed in and uh, i think that's also why the camera is just a little bit pixely. I apologize for that. I guess I just had it too zoomed in, but basically I just move this around and sort of create as many unique and interesting shapes as I possibly could around the face. And I think this just gives some contrast to the drawing. Now this wasn't something that I came up with. I saw this on TikTok and I just thought it would be interesting to put this in here. Hello everyone. I don't remember if I came in before I started this project and talked about it, but this is where I'm at with it right now. I took and uh, I was waiting for some acetone. There's a box, like, I think I, I think I have the setting on wrong, right? But just in case that that's up there and that is distracting, I'm sorry, I'll change that. Um, anyways, uh, I, I was waiting for acetone. They sent me mineral spirits. They're kind of the same thing, kind of not the same thing. One is used for oil-based stuff. Uh, the other is used for like lacquers and uh, nail polish. Yeah, this is where we are at with this right now. All right, I'll take a picture of it and show you guys before I go into it. But I want to put another layer of charcoal on here. Uh, and also, it, it lightens everything a little bit, right? Because it's, uh, it's like paint remover or uh, thinner and so on and so forth. So I need to go back in to like all the shadowy areas, especially like in the So I just need to put those tones back in, kind of go from there. Uh, oh, and the other thing that it did was it sort of just softens everything, right? Mineral spirit is used, I know, in colored pencil to sort of uh, dissolve the colored pencil and blend it better. It's left a pretty interesting effect. I like it and so forth. Uh, I put the mineral spirits in a uh, spray bottle and I, I just went ham with it. And then I sprayed it with fixative. So I can't erase any. Uh, right now anyway uh, I'm going to get back into this all right guys so what I'm doing now is I'm just going over this with some fine charcoal and I'll probably bring some charcoal pencils in at this point to just hype up the contrast right now one thing that I wish I did uh, because I think it just provides more contrast is to leave the outer areas with all the boxes alone uh, but I was sort of just pushing this and pushing this and I really wanted to play around with this and see all the different textures so on and so forth that I could create with this but once this is all done and I have uh, completely applied more um, charcoal to this and spray this with uh, uh, mineral spirits I am then going to go in and I am then going to I'm going to spray it again with mineral spirits and then uh, fix it up and then repeat all right guys I'm going to this with uh, mineral spirits again and then 
go back over it with charcoal again. Possibly charcoal powder. All right, so here I'm just going over it with mineral spirits again. And really, at this point, the project was spray it with mineral spirits, wait 20 minutes, and then spray it with uh, fixative, and then repeat uh, over and over again. Now, one thing that I'm trying to do with the bottle is I'm just trying to control the spray by just tapping the bottle. Uh, and uh, before I started recording it, I took this in the other room and I would lay it down and then let the mineral spirits just drip, right? You know, you just sort of touch the spray bottle and let it drip down. Now I'm just re-going over this with some charcoal applying this just a little bit more darkening areas up that I think need to be darkened up but also trying to leave some contrast uh, areas of uh, white so that there's a little bit more depth and light in it and we still have that sparkle kind of look and then what I did here is I went over it with a mop brush to sort of soften things out make it a little bit more smoother um, and Alright guys, um, it's almost done. Uh, I think that I'm kind of just pushing it uh, to a point where I just think I need to stop and whatnot. I'm going to spray it with acetone one more time and maybe come back into areas in the face with more charcoal powder and so forth. That's what it appeared. Kind of like how that happened in some areas. Kind of didn't like how that happened in some areas. So something that I'm just gonna have to play around with and and whatnot but this one basically done I just want I just want more of those spattered areas dark area by the face maybe I'll bring it in whatnot also it, it kind of feels like that uh, the uh, spattered spots are not permanent and whatnot I sprayed this with fixative back in here with some more mineral spirits, spray this, and then uh, spray it with fixative, and then probably call it for this project, and move on. I might, might just, like, I don't want the spattered, uh, the, the mineral spirits, right, um, there's a lot of other stuff that you use for this, right, it kind of, you know, flattens everything out, because it spreads all over, and I don't want it throughout the entire piece. Also, I lied, I'm going to come in with some white thin, and here I'm just spraying it again, and then I am going to come in with the white pencil. I'll actually make a mistake with the white pencil, but you can't see it. But like, if you look uh, close to the uh, face and the, and the arm, I sort of just uh, uh, I make I make a mistake. Uh, uh, it, it slips as as I am working on this, and you know whatever happens happens, and like Bob Ross says, happy little accidents. Right? That's what we're calling this. It's just a happy little accident. Going back in with the Tortillians, darkening up these areas. Um, but it's it's really just done. Um, at, at this point, uh, you know, you could push something out too far. And, and I was definitely getting to that point. And pushing it too far can really take it to the next level. And I just felt like this was the point where I needed to just stop and whatnot. One thing that uh, that the mineral spirits did, because it's a paint thinner, right? Is is what I'm guessing this is is it lightens everything, right? And so that's I guess why I wasn't too afraid of coming in with fixative because fixative kind of darkens everything. I really like how this turned out. I thought this was really cool and a lot of fun to do. People that I did it for like it. My, my brother Eddie likes it. Now I'm coming in to just touch up on all the whitest whites. Uh, this is going to be permanent, so if you're doing this, you know you might want to be careful. Uh, there's really no going back from this. It's one of the scariest parts, uh, and I could probably go over this completely with with white charcoal. Yeah. Now you can make some really cool effects with this. Uh, a while back I did this shiny forest type thing. Your only limitation is your imagination. Yeah, that rhymes. Sue me. Um, here's where I make that mistake. This this is going to slip. I, I need to put something on the end of this. So there needs to be a rubber type of 
thing on the end of this and I sort of just let this mistake be a part of the uh, work piece. It was so frustrating. It was so annoying to have to deal with this. By the way, it was not my intention for her to be holding this shape. It just it just happened that way. You know, like through all the shading and everything, it, it was pretty cool that that just happened. It's one of those happy little accidents. I did not mean for this to happen. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some more white to the hand to get a bright highlight, trying to remember the eyelids and so forth because there was some uh, light hitting there and here's the finished piece uh, it kind of came out kind of cool uh, and what not why i chose to put it uh, at this point of the video i don't know um, seems like i still have just a little bit work to do i guess i wanted to get these hands in there a little bit then i think i'm pretty much done And before this, I did spray it with some fixative. I don't think I sprayed it with any more acetone right now. I don't know why it was so hard to remove this and whatnot. It, it, it just, it, it's never been this hard. Maybe it was because of the fixative, but it was extremely hard to pull this tape off. I was able to do it, but it, as you can see, it pulled down the easel. The easel will move as it's hot and cold because wood expands and contracts in the winter. This was not a hot day, so the, the wood was sort of uh, contracting, I guess. It, and, and I don't know why it shouldn't have been. I was able to get it off, but we tore some of the border up. Um, it's fine, though. It was a scary thing, though, because I was scared that... Uh, I would ruin it. Anyways, thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.